Hi, this is Terry with Tree Marie Soap Works. Today I'm going to show you how I made this soap. It's a heart swirl soap. And stick around to the end of the video and I will tell you what I would have done differently for this batch. And let's get started. First I start with my distilled water and I use about a third of my water weight in distilled water ice cubes and then I top it off with my remaining water weight in just cold distilled water. And I use the ice cubes to help cut down on fumes and also it does help the lye solution cool down a little faster. Now that I've measured my lye, I add that to my water and stir that till it's dissolved. At this point, I measure my sodium lactate, which is a hardener, and it's not necessary, but it just helps you be able to unmold your soap sooner and it makes your bar harder, which will make it last longer. I use a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils, and I set that aside with my lye solution, and I will add it later when my lye solution has cooled. Next, I measure my coconut oil, and I get that melting, and then I start to measure my liquid oils. I start with my avocado oil, then my castor oil, and then my olive oil. I use these little squeeze bottles just to top off the weight so I don't go over. Once the coconut oil is melted, I measure in my cocoa butter pastilles and I stir those until they're melted and if they need microwaved, I microwave them until they're just barely melted. Next, I prepare my colorants. First, I have Caribbean Kiss, and that's from Rustic Essentials. And I use that at a rate of 0.8 teaspoons per pound of oils. I just put that on a sheet of plexiglass, and then I add a little olive oil, and I mix it with my palette knife until it's completely combined. The next color I'm using is Sunshine Yellow and it's from Nurture Soap and I'm using that at a rate of 1.25 teaspoons per pound of oils. For my next colorant, I'm using Smooth Coconut Carbon, and that's from Elements Bath & Body, and this is also known as Activated Charcoal. And when I use this, I always use it at 1.5 teaspoons per pound of soap. Elements Bath & Body has a colorant calculator, and if you're wondering how I figure my colorants at 0.8 teaspoons per pound of oils or 1.5 teaspoons per pound of soap, it's really easy by just using that calculator and you'll get the answer. So you only need to input a few things and the answer comes out and it's super easy. I've added a link below that tells you where you can find the description of the calculator. It's on Elements Bath & Body's YouTube channel and then also where you can find the calculator. Calculator. For my last color, I'm using titanium dioxide and I'm using that at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. The fragrance I'm using today is from Brambleberry and it's called Energy and it's one of my go-to fragrances because it doesn't cause acceleration. Next, I add my liquid oils to my melted hard oils. Since Energy is a well-behaved fragrance, I just go ahead and add that to my oils. Now that my oil solution and my lye solution are between 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, I add my sodium lactate to my lye solution, and then I strain that into my oils. If 
Before I start stick blending anything, I weigh my bowl and my contents, and then I subtract off the weight of my bowl, and then I figure out my batter. And today I'm using everything at 20% except for the turquoise color, I'm using that at 40%. At this point, I stick blend until an emulsion is reached, and you can tell an emulsion is reached when you look at the bell of the stick blender and you see if that batter that's running off there is breaking apart or if it's a consistent thin film over the whole bell of the stick blender. Now that my batter has reached an emulsion, I just go ahead and split my batter according to the numbers that I got earlier and I divide it into three of the 20% and one of the 40%. Next I add my colors to the batter and I add the turquoise to the bigger of the batters and the other three get the yellow, white, and black. At this point, I just want to make sure my batter is tracing and it's not still at an emulsion. Trace is when you can trace a line with your spatula and you can see the trail. And also, when you stir your batter, you can feel a little resistance. It's not like you're just stirring plain old water. At this point, I just add my batter to my squeeze bottles. And these squeeze bottles I lined with the sealed air packaging you get when you get your shipments. I just cut the top off and that works perfectly. Next I just pour about half that turquoise batter in the bottom of my mold and then I start to make my dots. And I just do random dots on top of each other and fill in the spaces and just have fun with it. And now the swirls, and this is the fun part. I just wanted hearts in this one, so you just kind of go through the middle and just connect a bunch of the dots together and swirl around and make it fancy. It's so fun. I wish I had so many more to swirl, and I, it makes me want to take up the Japanese uh, marbling, or that's uh, sumi nagashi, I think it's called, or there's ebrew, another word, but just marbling. I, I just, I love watching the marbling videos, and... It gives you all kinds of ideas for soap. When I finished my design, I covered my soap and I put it in an oven that was preheated to the lowest temperature. And when I put the soap in the oven, I turned the oven off and I turned the oven light on. And I just leave it that way overnight. And then I turn the oven light off in the morning and then I just let the soap come to room temperature naturally. And this helps it go through gel, of course, but also helps it to not get soda ash. And I usually keep my soap covered for another 24 hours after that before I cut it. It depends on where you live and how the humidity is but here it's kind of humid and that I believe causes soda ash as well as airflow so I keep my soap covered for an extra 24 hours Okay, now 
my soap is out of the mold and it's 48 hours later, I use this guide to cut off the sides of my slab. And then I divide the soap into two inch bars this way. I'm making these into guest bars since my slab came out so thin. Next I just need to divide these two inch bars in half and I do that by slanting my ruler and finding a measurement that I can easily divide in half. So I put the zero on one end and the seven inches on the other end and then I've marked my halfway points at the three and a half inch line and then I just cut them in half. And that makes me 10 bars but these are a little small. Since I am just cleaning my bars now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I learned from this batch. And the first thing I learned that kind of frustrated me is the yellow. It came out really dull. And I've had that happen a lot before with yellows and oranges. And I think when yellows and oranges that our micas go through gel, a lot of times they're just kind of a dull or pastel shade of yellow or orange. And I'm going to have to do further testing, but I have my color swatches that I made. And since they probably didn't go through gel because they're a little little smaller in a single cavity mold. They didn't go through gel so they're a deeper color but whenever my yellows go through gel a lot of times they're like this. A few videos back I did a soap that had two greens and a yellow and that yellow came out really nice and deep and I used this sunshine yellow mica and I also used a yellow oxide and a neon and that soap came out just a gorgeous yellow. It was a really deep yellow and I think if I would have done that here it would have been fine and now I think I probably wouldn't have even needed the mica. I could have just used the yellow oxide and the yellow neon and it probably would have been the same color. The other thing I learned when using a slab mold and you're just doing the design on the top, I should have poured more base color. I use 40% of the batter for my base color, but actually I use less than that because part of that color I used on top. So probably about 30% I use for my base color when I think I really should have used probably about 60%. So that's why these bars ended up being so small. My batter kind of got thick, so I didn't want to add any more. So I just ended up cutting these a little smaller and they're kind of like a guest size bar or between a guest size and a regular size bar. Other than that, I was really happy with how these bars came out and I can't wait to do some more marbling. I just love playing with soap this way. If you're interested in soap making, I started a group that's called Tree Marie Soap Works and I have a link down in my description and it's for learning about soap. It's strictly about soap. So you can share some of your projects and we can troubleshoot and we can learn together. And so if you're interested, you have to ask to join because it's a private group. And please ask to join under your personal Facebook account and not your business account. Thank you so much for joining me today and if you appreciate videos like this please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share and if you would like to receive a notification the next time I post just hit the bell. And I appreciate those of you that placed an order this week. Thank you very much and have a great day.